We are about to watch a great TED Talk video on augmented reality. But before we do that, I want to share with you all my inspiration behind this artwork here on stage tonight. And what it means to me to don't give up the ship. Let's go back to the late 1990s. We had just lost both Mother Teresa and Princess Diana. Madeleine Albright became our very first female Secretary of State, and J.K. Rowling, she published her first book in the award-winning Harry Potter series. This was also the time that I started school at Woodrow Wilson Middle School here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Now, the first day of school is rough for everybody. We share a lot of the same concerns, such as, will I know anyone here? Will I make any friends? What will my teachers be like? I had another concern that day. My heart raced as I wondered, will they know? Will the van driving me to school today give away the fact that we are homeless? Will my very clothes betray me? Because you see, this morning, my bitter joy came from this big bag of clothing that someone dropped off at Mercy Center for Women. And I rummaged through that to find something, anything, that would help me hide my personal struggles. I remember the rain falling down the window of the van as my thoughts consumed me. I don't remember a whole lot, but I do remember the drive and just looking out that window. When suddenly we had pulled up, and there I was in my brand new secondhand t shirt and my rhinestone set of jeans because, yes, those were in fact still a thing. Lost in the sea of strangers. I didn't know anybody. And I didn't quite feel up to the cold panic of introducing myself to someone new. So I sat down on the stairs of Woodrow Wilson Middle School, and I just waited for that door to finally open and let us all in. Again, I don't remember a whole lot from that day. But I do remember trying my best Stay hidden. I thought to myself, don't raise your hand. Don't make eye contact. And above all other things, don't do anything to make yourself noticed. Be invisible. Well, that worked for a little while, at least. <laughs> Me, I knew found powers of invisibility. Until, unfortunately, gym class. It was the only period of the day that I had with a very well-dressed and popular girl. She was relentless. She'd giggle with her friends about my faded secondhand t-shirt and my messy hair. And worst of all, my smell. Because unfortunately, when you are poor, you can't always afford deodorant. Sometimes a bar of soap is this luxury item and that goes double when you're a child that's poor. So I'd go over to the bleachers and I'd sit, knees to my chest, head down, and weep silently. This went on for weeks until one day this beautiful, strong ebony goddess, she had enough. She turned to that well-dressed girl, and she told her, Be quiet. You have no right to talk to her like that. And the funny thing is, as soon as she spoke up, another student chimed in, and then another, and then another, until there's this whole beautiful choir of voices telling the well-dressed girl to be quiet. They had had enough. Later, my hero, who would one day be our student vice president, she turned to me and she said, Heather, 
You've got to stop letting them see you cry. You give them power over you. Try to be strong. I was a very quiet child, and I was often lost in my own thoughts. But her words, her words had me lost for weeks. Words have power. They can break you down as soon as they can build you up. And her words had taken me by the hand and raised me up. Soon after, I found a passion in community service, as well as the creative arts. It was the first time that I felt strong. It was the first time that I felt like I had the power to do something. No longer trying to be invisible, wanting to be seen, I took to the stage. And for the very first time, I performed spoken word poetry with the help of a few friends. The poem was by Emily Dickinson. And it read, a word is dead when it is said, some say. Well, I say, it just begins to live that day. It's a simple poem, but his words had meaning, and they had risen me up. They had power. And I was no longer really concerned with, will they now? Frankly, I was no longer concerned with them in general. But I was concerned with, what can I do to help pull myself up? And what can I do to help raise others up with me? So I spent my evenings helping elderly folk at nearby St. Mary's. I rocked at bingo. <laughs> I raked leaves, and I picked up trash around my school. And I walked the March of Dimes for my community. I grew up here in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I have many stories still to tell. But this is the one that came to my mind strongly when I received a postcard this summer inviting artists to create an artwork that was around the theme, Don't Give Up the Ship for TEDx Erie. Here, in my artwork, each and every one of us is this ship. We will certainly have our trials. Our sails may feel like they're on fire sometimes. And it might feel like there's another wave coming to smack us down. But as long as we have one another to help raise us up, we will weather any storm together. The real point of don't give up the ship to me is the strength of the many hands of this community that help raise us up. Let's keep raising others up with us. Now, we are ready to watch this great TED Talk on augmented reality. And after this talk, we're going to apply what we learned to it to this artwork, because this artwork has some augmented reality tech to it. But first, um, I do want to make sure real quick, if you haven't already, install the app Blipar on your phones, B-L-I-P-P-A-R. And if you notice that someone around you does not have a device on them, show your screen. Be a part of this community, because that's what TEDx Erie is all about. Thank you. So wouldn't it be amazing if our phones could see the world in the same way that we do? As we're walking around, being able to, to point the phone at anything and then have it actually recognize images and objects like the human brain, and then be able to pull in information from an almost infinite library of, of knowledge and experience and ideas.
Well, traditionally that was seen as science fiction, but now we've moved to a world where actually this has become possible. So the best way of explaining it is to just show it. What you can see over here is Tamara who's holding my phone that's now plugged in. So let me start with this. What we have here is a painting of the great poet Robbie Burns, and it's just a normal image. But if we now switch inputs over to the phone, uh, running our technology, you can see effectively what Tamara is seeing on the screen. And when she points at this image, something magical happens. <laughs> now, summer blinks and flowery now what's great about this is the there's no trickery blinks. here. There's no, um, there's nothing done to this image. And what's great about this is the, the technology is actually allowing the phone to start to see and understand much like how the human brain does. Not only that, but as I move the object around, it's going to track it and overlay that content seamlessly. Again, the thing that's incredible about this is this is how advanced these devices have become. All the processing to do that was actually done on the device itself. Now, this has applications everywhere, uh, whether in things like uh, art and museums, like you just saw, or in the world of, say, advertising or print journalism. So a newspaper becomes out of date as soon as it's printed. And here is this morning's newspaper. And we have some Wimbledon news, which is great. Uh, now what we can do is point at the front of the newspaper and immediately get the bulletin. You adapt, and you, you have to be flexible. You have to be willing to change direction at a split second. And she does all that. She's won this title. And that linking of the, the digital content to something that's physical is what we call an aura. And I'll be using that term a little bit as we go through the talk. So what's great about this is it isn't just a faster and more convenient way to get information in the real world, but there are times when actually using this medium allows you to be able to display information in a way that was never before possible. So what I have here is a wireless router. Um, my American colleagues have told me I've got to call it a router um, so that everyone here understands. Um, but nonetheless, here is the device. So now what I can do is rather than getting the instructions for the device online, um, I can simply point at it, the device is recognized, and then... Begin by plugging in the great ADSL cable, then connect the power, finally the yellow ethernet cable. Congratulations, you have now completed setup. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> The incredible work that made that possible was done uh, here in the UK um, by, by scientists at Cambridge. And uh, they work in our offices, and I've got a lovely picture of them here. They couldn't all be on stage, but we're going to bring their aura to the stage. So here they are. They're not very animated. This was the fourth take, I'm told. <laughs> OK. So as we're talking about Cambridge, let's now move on to technical advancements, because since we started putting this technology on mobile phones uh, less, than, less than 12 months ago, the speed and the processor in these devices has grown at a really phenomenal rate. And that means that I can now take cinema quality 3D models and place them in the world around me. So I have one over here. Tamara, would you like to jump in? <laughs> I should eat them. <laughs> so then, after the fun comes the more emotional side of what we do, because effectively this technology allows you to see the world through someone's eyes, and for that person to be able to take a moment in time and effectively store it and tag it to something physical that exists in the real world. What's great about this is the tools to do this are free, they're open, they're available to everyone within our application, and educators have really got on board with, with the classrooms. So we have teachers who've tagged up textbooks, teachers who've tagged up uh, school classrooms, and a great example of this is a school in the UK. Uh, I have a picture here from a video, and we're now gonna play it. See what happens. Keep going. TV! <laughs> oh my God. Now move it either side, see what happens. Move away from it and come back to it. Oh, it's got, that is so cool! 
<laughs> and then have you got it again? <laughs> so it's not magic, it's available for everyone to do and actually I'm going to show you how easy it is to do by doing one right now. So a sort of, um, I'm told it's called a stadium wave, so we're going to start from this side of the room on the count of three and go over to here. Tamara, are you recording? Okay, so are you all ready? One, two, three, go! <laughs> that looks really good, huh? <laughs> Um, okay, now we're going to switch back into the Erasmus application, and what Tamara's going to do is, is tag um, that video that we just took onto my, my badge so that I can remember it forever. Now, we have lots of people who are doing this already, uh, and we've talked a little bit about the educational side. On the emotional side, we have people who've done things like um, sent postcards and Christmas cards back to their family uh, with, with little messages on. We have people who have, uh, for example, taken the inside of the engine bay of an old car and tagged up different components within an engine so that if you're stuck and you want to find out more, you can point and discover the information. We're all very, very familiar with the internet. In the last 20 years, it's really changed the way that we live and work and the way that we see the world. And what's great is we sort of think this is the next paradigm shift because now we can literally take the content that we share, we discover, and that we enjoy and make it a part of the world around us. It's completely free to download this application. If you have a good Wi-Fi connection or 3G, um, this process is very, very quick. Oh, there we are, we can save it now. Uh, it's just gonna do a tiny bit of processing to convert that image that we just took into a sort of digital fingerprint. And the great thing is, if you're a professional user, so a newspaper, the tools are pretty much identical to what we've just used to create this demonstration. Uh, the only difference is that you've got the ability to add in links and slightly more content. Are you now ready? ready okay, so I'm told we're ready, which means we can now point at the image. And there you all are. One, two, three, five. Well done. We've been Erasmus. Thank you. So, are we going to do something today? Yeah. Um, we're going to show you how to use this Blipar app that we've been talking about a lot. Now, this is something that everyone can do probably during intermission because you don't want to be standing too far. Yeah, exactly. It, what's going to happen is that you can do this pretty much from the first three rows back in the middle. You can also do this um, out in the lobby area where there is an additional uh, print of this. It usually doesn't work too well on the sides, uh, so you, you do have to get closer during intermission. Now, uh, in addition, I did load up a copy of this image on Facebook, so if anybody wants to go to our Facebook page, you can, and you have the Blipar app, uh, pull up the image on your screen and that should work too, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Oh, great, well, let's, so I've already downloaded the app here and I'm gonna hold the phone up to the image. You have oh, to gotta, stand gotta, back okay. and you have to make sure you get it all in focus. All right. Okay? And once it's all on your screen, you can just tap your screen. I'm gonna fall off the stage, aren't I? Okay. Oh, there we go. We get it? Uh, it's not, it's recognizing. You know, the, the wonders of modern technology. Oh, yeah. there we go. Hey, so the first animation thing, going. The first thing that you should see is an animation that pops up on your screen. Yeah. That kind of furthers the concept. And then there'll be a next button. Ooh. Press the next button. Okay. Okay. And oh. you'll see three different icons. Yes. One icon you'll see is the TEDx Erie logo. Yes. You can click on that logo, mm -hmm. and you can go to our website where you can see our sponsors, okay. and you can get more information on the event. Um, as well as stay tuned for next year's event. Um, One of the things about uh, the Warner of your very thick walls. <laughs> and so uh, things don't uh, connect very quickly. All right. And so the next, the next button, if you press yeah. X, yes. the next button that you could press is the Twitter bird that flies across your screen. Um, if you click that, you get a live feed um, of, of what's going on on Twitter in this right. event. Okay. You might see a few pictures of uh, shoes on there, <laughs> it's possible. Um, the last one, if you press X, yep. okay, is that you can go and you can click on the ship. Okay. And that will load a photo booth. And in that photo booth, you can all take a picture of raising the ship up with us. You want to take a picture with me? We could try. All right. Is it working? Uh, yes, it is. And eventually. <laughs> Just peek my head in. 
<laughs> so um, when this does load, okay, you can click and take that picture, oh. and Let's then that around. Hey, there's the audience. Hey, audits. there we go. Um, eventually, the first one that should load is a ship, which you can take a picture of yourself raising the ship up with us. There we go. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay. Thank you Thanks. very much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Your pleasure. <laughs>